So, can you handle the truth? You want to know what the real story is in relation to the Gremlin Bell? Or the Guardian Bell, as it's sometimes known? Well, sit back, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and listen to me tell the story of the Gremlin Bell. Now, the story that's used to sell these little bells is that once upon a time, a lone biker riding at night on a long, lonely stretch of highway was beset by road gremlins who attempted to make him crash. Having pulled over, or crashed, or been pulled to a stop by these gremlins, depending on who's telling the story, a mysterious figure comes out of the dark and hands him a little bell and tells him, this bell will keep the gremlins away. They then go on to suggest that giving someone a gremlin bell for their bike as a gift is a great way to help keep your friend or loved one safe on the road. Well, that's all fine and good for advertising. But does anyone really think that's what happened? And why those bells have a history? There's nothing wrong with superstition. I mean, when was the last time you saw a gremlin? Superstition isn't harmful, and it won't do any harm to have a tiny bell making a tiny racket as you roll down the road on your bike, especially if it makes someone feel better that they gave it to you. I suspect the companies selling these bells ever found the original source of the story, and at this point I think they all got their stories from other companies that sell the bells and the original source is probably one person misremembering the real story or misunderstanding what they were told. It's also possible that the source of that retail story, if it were ever traced, would prob probably lead back to a piece of fiction in an old biker's magazine or one motorcycle store selling bells on the old Chinese whispers game distorting the original story into something unrecognisable long before the internet was born. The thing is, these stories are missing an important point, but one that was very real and had real history that can be documented. No, there wasn't some guy who was attacked on his bike by a bunch of little green men. And no, a stranger never came along and gave him a bell to protect himself but I can certainly see where that story came from. So, what is the real story? Now, contrary to the lone biker beset by gremlin story, I came across an intelligent, believable story about the origin of gremlin bells. And I'm inclined to believe that story because the source was part of the story long before there was a retail industry selling these bells. A guy had been riding his Harley knucklehead since he came home from World War II, where he had been flying over Europe and Germany as part of the Army Air Corps. His story and the story of the Gremlin Bells have their origin in that war experience. Now this guy, whose name was not stated, was a grey beard in his mid to late 60s. When he gave this story back in the 80s, and was still riding the knucklehead he purchased new when he came home from the war in 1946. He had been a World War II bomber crewman, flying B-24s from North Africa to Eastern Europe, and later from Britain to Germany and back. American daytime raids leaving during the morning would often return after dark, after being in the air for anywhere from eight to nine hours, particularly in winter. Flight crews often flew from dawn till dark, and after a mostly monotonous day in the air is when the gremlin stories began, apparently. If you're a fan of the old sci-fi television, then you've actually seen the origin of the bells, but didn't know it. There's a famous Twilight Zone episode from when it was a TV show some 50 years ago, with good old William Shatner, you know, Captain Kirk from the original Star Trek TV series. As a former World War II pilot who sees gremlins outside the window, tearing apart the wing of the passenger plane he's travelling on, 
Was it really some metaphysical creature trying to tear the wing apart? Or was he just losing his mind? The episode of the show actually had a foundation in history, and it's the same history as the Gremlin Bell. Was he losing his mind? Or was he sleep deprived? Or, not to put too fine a point on it, sp spun out from sleep deprivation and or speed? You see, the Greybeard pointed out that gremlins aren't mythical creatures. Nope. They're the things you see out the corner of your eye when you're sleep deprived and have been taking amphetamines and your mind begins to play very real tricks on you, particularly in your peripheral vision. Now, 10-hour bombing missions were boring as hell for 99% of the trip and the, with the drone of the engines, the sheepskin lined clothing from head to toe to keep the uh, crew warm, Sleep deprivation and prolonged lack of mobility, mobility all contributed to lulling them to sleep. The air forces of the various nations didn't want their pilots falling asleep and flying into the ground at 400 miles an hour or failing to see enemy fighter planes swooping down on them. So many issued amphetamine tablets like candy to help those people stay awake. Now amphetamines were and are still an acceptable method of compensating for sleep deprivation in such circumstances. And while lack of sleep and amphetamine use can lead to hallucinations, particularly under stressful conditions. That's where the whole gremlins thing started. Keeping fighter pilots and bomb crews awake was critical for obvious reasons. This wasn't the tooth-rotting, brain-eating crud your wife's cousin makes in a two-litre soda bottle in the Notel Motel and smokes from a glass pipe. It was, in fact, pharmaceutical stuff made by companies like Bayer and Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson and other large pharmaceutical companies. Not quite the same chemical responsible for the faces of meth, even if it contains the same, or very similar, chemical compound. But more like the Adderall you and your buddies did to study for exams in high school and college. But flight crews and fighter pilots would often go long hours without needing sleep. And they'd see things out the corner of their eyes that looks or looks like something out there on the wing. To add to this battle damage from German fighter planes or anti-aircraft artillery and occasionally bits and pieces of the planes would fall off in flight. And if you just caught it out the corner of your eye after three days with little or no sleep, you were likely to see something out on the wing, tearing chunks out of the wing, just as William Shatner's character did in the, that episode of The Twilight Zone. According to the guy who told the story, different people came up with different ways to get around this effect. From singing, to playing the harmonica, to, well, hanging in a cowbell or dinner bell from the dashboard of the aeroplane, where the constant jingling would cause them to bring their focus back to reality when it began to drift, even if it was just because it had become annoying. Gremlin bells were to keep the gremlins away, and they even sometimes worked. It's just that they weren't given to some lone biker to keep gremlins from tearing his bike apart on the long, lonesome highway. Now let's fast forward to the end of World War II. World War II ended and the vets came home, and more than a few of them got on motorcycles and made history in another way. They were the original bikers. They became the one percenters in the late 40s and into the 50s and 60s. These vets who had been flying during World War II and Korea brought the gremlin stories with them. In the late 40s and 50s, you could go to your family doctor and get a prescription for amphetamines just by telling your doc, I'm tired all the time and work and the kids are taking their toll. Sound familiar? 
Abuse was as real then as it is now, and amphetamines, like many prescription drugs, were treated as social drugs that would extend the party, so to speak. Fast forward to the 60s, and the hardcore one percenters were the majority of bikers in the USA and other countries. Some, many, or most of them, used amphetamines for recreation and to add hours to the day to help get stuff done around the house and working on their bikes. Nobody smoked that stuff until the ephedrine based stuff started around 1990. And the only tweakers were worried about in the 80s were people putting stuff in their arms. They partied all weekend, slept Sunday night, got up and went to work, at least those who had jobs. People used amphetamines during the week to get stuff done. The way you might have used Adderall to get through school or college. Dope was just part of life and it generally didn't screw up your life unless you were an IV user or just didn't bother limiting your intake. After two or three days or even four days of partying, people riding at night would experience the same hallucinations, especially on dark roads where headlights leaking light to the side would cast weird moving shadows as you went past a tree or a bush or a rock or a dam. Was that something standing on the side of the road back there? Was that a dog? What the hell? There's nobody there. But I swear, there was a second ago. Gremlins are real, they're just not physical things. They are the tricks your mind plays on you when you are exhausted, and they're a sure indication that the brain desperately, desperately needs sleep to replenish and rejuvenate itself. They live in your nervous system and they can be very annoying and very scary sometimes. Have you ever been on a night ride, going somewhere rather than pleasure riding? Where you were so tired that every tree or bush or rock had something or something or something started to jump out at you as you went by? Well, every shadow is shifting as you passed a bush, as it was it a deer, was it a dog? or a mountain lion about to run across the road? When it starts, it's just slightly annoying. It's your brain telling you, pull over, I need sleep, or you're going to crash. These were the things this old grey beard was talking about. And this is what the internet bell sellers get wrong, because they don't actually believe gremlins are real. They are just selling bells. So if someone gives you a gremlin bell, it's not based on a completely made up story, but it's not the story the giver thinks was the origin of the bells. Who knows, the endless annoying ringing that can make you think something is falling off your bike may well keep you awake or allow you to stop drifting off since you're obviously too tired to think clearly and pull over and get some sleep. I hope you found this interesting. That's my take on the Gremlin Belt, and it sounds very convincing to me. Well, congratulations, you've made it to the end of the video. I hope that wasn't too boring for you. I know it went on for a bit, but it was a fair bit to get through. Bye for now.